r slash ask reddit, what's a bad tray of yours you're aware of, but can't seem to change? I love staying up late because it's so peaceful when the world goes to sleep, but I hate staying up late when I'm extremely tired the next day. Know this one all too well, it's a constant battle, pretty good during the week, but on the weekend it isn't uncommon I look at the clock and it's 4am and I have something to do early the next day, I absolutely love that late night only me time. It's when the best research is done, literally anything that moderately peaks peaks my interest I will deep dive into from 10pm to 3am, it could be a new PC or car mod, a world war 2 submarine, or some random dude I went to high school whose Facebook page indicates that he went batshit crazy. Edit. IT's peaks not peaks. I'm afraid to take risks, and by the time I'm confident enough to do something, I already missed out on an opportunity. I do this too. Usually I listen to my anxiety about doing new things or meeting new people and come up with, usually insignificant, reasons not to, then by the time I've managed to overcome that it'll be too late. I was like that but I noticed that after sitting at home all day due to anxiety I would feel bad about doing nothing. So I pushed myself and did a social event and do you know what happened? 10pm still came. The event didn't kill me, and I felt better since I wasn't shut in all day. So now when that social anxiety voice comes up in my mind I ask myself if I'd rather sulk in anxiety all day and feel like crap or do something about it by doing something or going somewhere. I enjoy my me time a little too much, my social skills are fine but it's getting harder and harder to leave the house. I can relate to this one, I love my friends and once I'm out I'll generally have a good time. It's just getting there that's the issue. That's exactly what it is, you explained my feelings so well, I love hanging out with my friends, I just don't ever want to lol. I've been told I'm really defensive and can't take criticism. Which is really annoying because I can't dispute those claims without appearing defensive and unable to take criticism. Edit. Great. Now my highest comment is about something that I'm pretty insecure about and my inbox is a perfect mix of people trying to help and others telling me I sound defensive and unable to take criticism. The ultimate attack. The checkmate of checkmates. I'm a full time procrastinator. I was going to say this but I put it off for too long. There is nothing more horribly meta than procrastinating on procrastinating on reddit. I have a hard time remembering things people tell me unless it requires action or my effort. I just have a poor memory in general. Holding my attention is key to getting me to remember things, but that's hard when I have a very low attention span. The moment I break my focus, my brain wipes everything I need to know from that conversation. This is me, I basically have a notepad as an extension of my brain at work. I overshare what's going on in my life, I have no idea why, but it just spills out of me. I try to stop, but I only realize I'm doing it after talking to people. Edit, I cannot reply to everyone. Thanks for all of your input. Dot, comma and to anyone who asked how my day was going. Well today I was parking in the grocery store parking lot. And there was a grocery cart in my stall, so I had to push it out of the way to park. Then I went inside and ran into my good friend who I haven't seen in 10 years. Isn't that funny and we talked about our exes and our scandalous sex lives. Then I went to grab my prescription from the pharmacy. Also grabbed plan B because things went awry last night. Oh and when I was done grocery shopping I ran into my old teacher who was super hot and now we are going on a date. Also my mom and I got in this really awkward conversation over the phone. I can't believe she was telling me details about her sex life. Talk about oversharing much. I love people that overshare. It gives such a clear look into the mindset of someone that I'm just drawn to people that talk like this. Plus, for me, it creates an instant connection. At least on my end. It also makes conversations and first dates so much easier because we can just talk about whatever stuff you're wanting to unload. Seriously, this is my favorite type of person. LOL. Do you feel intimately connected to someone else when you do this? I do. Social anxiety, but it comes off as me being stuck up to everyone else. I've also realized this recently. I don't join conversations, or wave to people who are already talking. Basically, I hate the idea that I might be interrupting someone, 
bothering them, getting in the way, etc. I've been thinking that way for years, and only recently have I found out that I came off as a jerk who thinks he's too good for other people. I'm really the opposite, at least I try my best to not be a jerk, where I constantly feel I'm not good enough for others. Me too, I think it makes me unapproachable at work. Once I get to know people I feel slightly more at ease and can open up. I've had co-workers say you're so nice. I don't know why I was so nervous to ask you questions. It makes me feel bad. Also, I have resting beach face which I cannot seem to make better. When I try to smile it feels disingenuous. I have a hard time trusting people. Or believing that people actually enjoy having me around. I always assume people have a negative opinion of me, it sucks, but I'm trying really hard to break it. Same boat buddy, this negative self image and progressing social anxiety is really kicking my ass and I'm just trying my hardest to feel comfortable around people again. Get best of luck in gaining that trust in people back and improving your confidence in yourself. I wish you the best. Yep, years of bullying ridicule growing up can really do a number on a person, especially as a girl. Girls are ducking atrocious. Thank you for the kind words. I'm working really hard on loving myself and I've come a long way, but still have a ways to go. Getting caught up in daydreaming fantasies. My god they're addictive, and really just an escape from reality, and it's so hard to get out of it. That feeling when you finally get that one good dream and then wake up. Then you try to fall back asleep to continue the dream. Maybe if you're tired enough it can happen but with less intensity. But you probably end up just waking up because you can't get into it and the logic in your dream start to not make any sense. I get paralyzed when I have important life changing things to do. I always wait until it is too late to do them because the fear of confronting them is paralyzing to me at it. My first gold holy cow. Thank you kind fellow. I hope we can all overcome what we are afraid to face. Colon. I'm with you 100%. I used to not even check important voicemails for a week. I'm really guilty of that one. I have a very difficult time saying no. Just say yes and. I love that this is a thing. I'm really lazy. I mean. I can function. Get to work. Get dressed. Feed myself and my kids. However, most of the time I'd prefer to park myself in front of a TV and do nothing at all. I clean my house, meaning I pick up everything. But it hasn't had a good cleaning when chemicals, etc in a while, or a dusting. So lazy. Really need a maid because I know after this long, counting on me to magically get the ambition to do it regularly is never going to happen. I hear ya. Most people have dreams or goals. I just want to sit here and do nothing and have nothing required of me. Now try being lazy and having ambitious goals. Worst combo ever Reddit. Damn didn't know so many people felt this way. From most of the useful comments from the other side. It seems like our best solution is literally down to practice. Building the connection between neurons in our brains until this becomes muscle memory. Getting up and doing the things you need to do to meet your dreams and goals requires motivation and training. I loathe myself and at the same time consider myself superior to everyone else. I relate to this so much. It's like I have this standard set of skills abilities in my head that I expect everyone else to be able to do. Or a bar that I think everyone should meet. It's the bare minimum. In my head. And when other people don't meet those expectations it makes me feel like they are inferior in some way. Yet at the same time, I'll beat myself up over this other set of skills abilities that I think I should be able to do. Or expect myself to reach this other impossible standard. That changes constantly. And disgust myself when I fail. Edit. Who knew there were so many of us? Good luck to the rest of you perfectionists out there. Oh look, it's me. Mine is interrupting people when they talk. I know it's rude but it just happens without me being aware of it and feel so embarrassed whenever I do it. I get this too. It's like something inside of me panics that I won't be able to get in what I want to say before you've moved on and left the topic behind and I can never get it back. It's so ducking stupid and irrational but I can't manage to stop without intense concentration on doing so. In which case I'm not paying appropriate attention anyhow so either way I'm not always hearing what you're saying. It's rude and annoying to everyone and I hate it. I can relate. It's terrible when you're in a group having a conversation. And you're on the periphery. Just waiting for an opening to add your thoughts in. 
but then the conversation quickly moves to another topic and you miss your chance. I joke around too much, it's my way of coping with stress, anxiety, and other emotions and while it can be enjoyable at times, I know it can be frustrating for others too. Snap. My wife hates it when she's trying to have a serious conversation but I just can't help it. I have to find the humor in everything so that I'm at ease. Same. I make really dark jokes as well. My mom said something like, oh my god you're horrible, after one of my jokes, which is true. Controlling the volume of my voice. What? I say yes to thing I don't want to do, then sometimes I cancel last minute, I'm an a-hole. Hello, I am you and you are me. Let's get together and make some plans we can cancel last minute. I work in a hospital IQ and I fart in the patient's room a lot because I know they will be blamed. Nurse here, I also do this. I heard a story from one of the girls who said she also farts in IQ rooms. Anyways, turns out the patient was only half sedated and the guy says to her boy you girls are so stinky. Point is, one day one of your patients are going to ask you why you shit your pants. Amazing. Sometimes I spend too much time volunteering. Occasionally I'll hit someone with my car. Everybody inside the car was fine. Stanley. Sue me. I constantly take the piss even in serious topics. So when topics get serious I just shut my mouth. I'm not sure what this means. Source is too British. I think he means he jokes a lot. Even during serious times. I'm not British though. Not replying to friends families text messages or missed calls. I'm all up for talking in person but for some reason I have almost a phobia of texting people back. I always play devil's advocate in every situation. Someone wrongs my friends. I point out how they could interpret the actions a different way. I apply this with my life too and it helps me deal with inconsiderate a-holes but doesn't work for everyone. I lack tact in situations where I feel people are skirting an issue. Maybe they have a good reason but I just can't stand when everyone is intimating something but not saying what they mean. So I ask well do you mean? And I'm possibly more brutal than people expect. I've tried to change this one a lot but can't seem to manage it. I'd rather appear rude once than take the wrong end of the stick and appear a fool forever. I do this too. For every thought that pops into my head, I also have to consider the opposite of my opinion on it. Even if I didn't want to invest that amount of thought, even if it was a really trivial thing, it's kind of annoying. I'm late for work pretty much every single day of the week because I am horrible at getting up early enough to get ready and out the door in time. Even when I try to get up earlier, I just take longer to get ready and still leave the house late. Mornings have never been kind to me ever since I was a kid and getting up and out the door for school was a struggle. And now as a grown ass adult I still can't get it together. So aim. I work at 7 and live 12 minutes away from work. I got up at 5.30 this morning so I could wash and dry my hair. Didn't wash my hair. Spent extra time making myself lunch though. Still 15 minutes late to work. Always. I get jealous and irritated easily sometimes. I hate it. I get irritated with people when they don't understand something I've already explained a couple times. I'm cynically sometimes interrupt people when I can't tell what they are about to say or where the conversation is leading. Just cut to the point, I guess. When I drink I almost always get drunk and black out more often than not. I can be an angry drunk. I make crude comments or heartily laugh at dark, twisted humor and look down on those who appear uncomfortable or offended. I'm arrogant and judgmental. Glad to know I'm not the only utter dunt. Cheers. When I drink I almost always get drunk and black out more often than not. I can be an angry drunk. This shit does my head in. Grow up or stop drinking if you can't handle your booze. I try to fix everything. Someone wants to vent to me about something. I propose a solution to what appears to be a problem. Really. The person just wanted to vent. They didn't want a solution. Most people coming to another person with an emotion related struggle. Especially to do with work friends, or relationships in their life, don't really need a solution. What they want more than anything is to be validated. To be told man, that must be really ducking tougher that would bother me too. Saying that tells them it's okay to feel bogged down by what they perceive as a large problem. 
If after you have affirmed their feelings, they ask you but what can I do about it, then you are more than welcome to offer a considerate solution or plan of attack. I say all this because I absolutely did the exact same thing for my entire life, and only a few months ago started following my own advice in this post. The difference it made to my familial, romantic, and platonic relationships was immense. I highly recommend giving it a go. I am really envious of other people and their successes. I know a few people who are perfectly nice people, always smiling, really attractive, doing well at work, charismatic, popular with everyone. I hate them for it. Every time they fail at something brings me horrible, guilty glee. I hate that about myself, but I'm not really sure what to do about it. Those people don't deserve my hatred and I'd never intentionally do anything bad to them or allow anything bad to happen to them if I could stop it. It's just this horrible nastiness inside of me and the main reason why I always hesitate to think of myself as a truly good person. I don't think good people feel that kind of pointless, uncalled for hatred towards others. It's because you are comparing yourself to other people. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday. I think feelings like this can often arise from being dissatisfied with your own life. This has definitely been the case for me in the past. In the nicest way possible. Try to work on improving yourself instead of hoping others fail. I apologize for everything. Even when it's not my fault. To the point where I need to apologize because I've over apologized and annoyed people in the process. I also procrastinate a hell of a lot. My eating habits are the absolute worst. I know I have a weight problem. I know I need to change. I even want to change. But for some reason it just feels so impossible. My friend was able to just not have junk food again and simply start eating healthy. But I don't know why that's such a hard concept for me. I know I'm very addicted to unhealthy food and that it almost gives me a high when I eat it. But there are people who like telling me that that's simply an excuse. But with an abusive childhood and very bad depression in adulthood. Food has been my crutch since I was a toddler. That habit is stained pretty deep and I'm scared it can never be removed. It is easier to not buy junk food than it is to resist eating it once it is in the house. Never go to the store with an empty stomach. Only go with a shopping list full of healthy foods and stick to the list while in the store. Cutting off all the junk food at once will just result in a binge eating episode. So allow yourself some but in small amounts and not every day. Take it one step at a time. You can do this. You have the power to change within. You just need to find it and apply it. When I have things to concentrate on, exams assignments, I kind of close down the other parts of my brain that make me a friendly person, have a sense of humor, conversationalist etc. Like I go into work robot mode until it's out the way and I can be a human again. I think it's partly due to leaving things last minute so I don't really have time for other things. Biting my nails. When I'm stressed I bite them off without thinking. I don't fold laundry. I drink too much. I need to take time off. I have a very dark sense of humor when it comes to death or dying. I can freak people out when I talk about myself dying when I'm laughing and joking. I'm not depressed. I'm just not afraid anymore. Spitting. I work in the trades and always breath dust. Whenever I'm outside I have a tendency to clear my throat and spit. That actually explains a lot. You have a reason for spitting. I always thought you tradies were just kinda gross and like to spit. I'm sorry. I stress eat like a food monster. I know it's a habit and I can't tell when it's happening. But I still end up chowing down instead of dealing with the issue and then get ray stress over body image and weight. I never check up on people. I don't ask how was work. Are you feeling any better? How are the kids? Those kinds of questions. If somebody decides to let me know how they are, I will acknowledge it and talk to them about it. But I never ask. In general I'm not very receptive when people talk about themselves. The only exception is my girlfriend. Yet, if somebody asks me anything that has to do with me and my life, suddenly I'm a chatterbox and I could go on and on about what's up with me. For most people, I just don't give a shit what's going on with them. But of course I care what's going on with me. It's my life after all. I also despise carrying on a conversation I'm not invested in. I've tried to find a compromise by asking more questions here and there. And by shortening how much I say about myself. 
immature as who will rock. My posture. The difference is huge but I can never hold it for more than a few minutes before I'm slouched over again. I'm not patient. I want results and now. I don't want to wait to hear how I did. To know if I got that job or loan. For my diet to make my body perfect. This was especially hard to handle during my custody dispute because over two years, most of it was waiting for my ex's lawyer to respond. I hate feeling like I'm playing a game of chess and can't do anything until the other player makes his move. I'm very result driven. The process annoys me. Procrastinating. It's also sort of tied into some mental issues I have and so it's really hard to change. Surprised I haven't seen this after scrolling for a bit. I'm such a judgmental person. But I'm silent about it. I do it all the time and I want to train myself to be more accepting and carefree to a point where there I never have a reason to judge. But, I really don't know how. I'm such a dun because of it. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.